Capillary blood collection is indicated in adult patients in cases of severe burns, extreme obesity, hypercoagulability, geriatric or fragile veins, need to preserve veins for therapy, home testing, apprehensive patients and point of care testing. Tests commonly performed on capillary blood are blood smear for microscopic assessment of cell morphology, preparation for malarial parasites, estimation of platelet number, white blood cell morphology, rapid tests, dried blood spot for early infant diagnosis, blood glucose monitoring, pre-blood donation, biochemistry tests available in the capillary mode analyzers, for example, bilirubin and thyroid function tests, hematology tests available in the capillary mode analyzers, bleeding time by IV's method, blood culture should not be performed on capillary blood. Equipment and supplies. Lancets. Specimen collection equipment. Filter paper for dry blood spot or DBS. Capillary tube. Test specific equipment. Blood smear slides. Rapid test devices. Micro collection tubes. Lancets. Manual lancets. Single-use lancets are available, but the depth of penetration cannot be controlled. Safety lancets. Single-use lancets for different depths are available, which activate only when it is positioned and pressed against the skin. The depth will never exceed 2.4 mm, facilitating a consistent puncture depth for easier sampling. Puncture depths. Less than 2 mm for all heel punctures less than 1.5 mm for finger punctures on children over 12 months, less than 2 mm for finger punctures on children over 8 years, less than 2.4 mm for finger punctures on adults. Verify information on requisition form and select micro collection devices. Assemble the supplies and choose the appropriate puncture site. Site selection for capillary collection. Conditions influencing the choice of heel or finger prick. Heel prick is recommended in neonates from birth to about 6 months with a weight of approximately 3 to 10 kgs. Finger pricks are recommended in infants over 6 months weighing more than 10 kgs. The recommended fingers are the middle and the ring finger. Avoid the thumb and index finger because of calluses and avoid the little finger because the tissue is thin. For heel puncture, use plantar surface of the heel, medial to a line drawn posteriorly from the large toe to the heel or lateral to a line drawn posteriorly from between the fourth and fifth toes to the heel. The placement of lancet should be on the side of the ball of the finger perpendicular to the lines of the fingerprint. Procedure Warming If possible, Gently warm the puncture site as warming can increase blood flow by sevenfold. A warm moist towel or warming device may be used for this, which should be heated higher than 42 degrees centigrade and a contact time of 3 to 5 minutes is to be given. Site cleansing. All precautions as mentioned in the venous collection are to be followed. Do not use betadine or povidone iodine. Skin puncture for finger. Inform grown-up patient about imminent pain. Hold the finger and firmly place a new sterile lancet at the selected site on the finger. If using self-retracting safety lancet, activate the lancet. If using manual lancet, perform single puncture with one smooth motion. Skin puncture for heel. Hold the foot with a firm grip. Grasp the heel and place the index finger over the arch. Hold intended puncture site. Firmly and completely depress the trigger of the lancet if using a safety lancet or perform single puncture with smooth motion if using a manual lancet. Puncture the site at a 90 degrees angle to the length of the foot. Discard the first drop of blood to avoid specimen dilution by tissue fluid. 
the excess of tissue fluid would dilute the sample and reduce the concentration of all the analytes, thus affecting the results. Never milk or scrape the puncture site. Collect the sample beginning with the second drop using any of the collection devices. Blood flow is enhanced by holding the puncture site downward and gently applying intermittent pressure to the surrounding tissue. Continue until desired volume has been collected. Follow recommended order of draw for microcollection tubes. While collecting blood in microcollection tubes, collect EDTA tube before serum tube. Mix anticoagulant containing microcollection tubes continuously during collection. When blood collection is complete, apply pressure with a clean dry gauze pad until bleeding stops. Label specimens immediately after the draw. Do not use adhesive bandages on children less than two years old as it may irritate the infant's skin. Ensure proper disposal of the lancets and other consumables as per guidelines. Heel puncture precautions. Do not puncture deep. Do not puncture through previous punctures. Do not puncture outside the medial and lateral aspects of the heel as previously described. Do not puncture the posterior curvature of the heel. Do not puncture in the arch. Do not puncture areas of the foot other than the heel. Complications of capillary blood collection. Collapse of veins can occur if the tibial artery is lacerated from puncturing the medial aspect of the heel. Osteomyelitis of the heel bone. Contact with the heel bone may cause osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis could go undetected for long periods and could result in serious complications for young children. Nerve damage if the fingers of neonates are punctured. Hematoma. Scarring. Localized or generalized necrosis. Skin breakdown from repeated use of adhesive strips, particularly in very young or very elderly patients. This can be avoided if sufficient pressure is applied and the puncture site is observed after the procedure.